Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Friday, uh, November 10th, 2023. And today is National Vanilla Cupcake Day. Sounds good to me. A nice vanilla cupcake. Chocolate icing on top of it. I mean, my kind of thing. Celebrate today with your own chocolate or with your own vanilla cupcake. It's also the Marine birthday today. So if you were someone who served in the Marines, like I have a couple family members that did, uh, this is also your day as well. So enjoy while you're celebrating the Marine's birthday. Enjoy a vanilla cupcake along with it. All right, that'll work. Uh, today we're going to look in the book of Acts, chapter number 8. That a story of a of an Ethiopian eunuch who had found the Lord. And this is in response to a a debate that was going on in the in a in a Facebook group, a uh, Christian Facebook group, um, not one that I've been talking negative about the last little bit. I'm not in that group anymore. Uh, but this is a different one, which I'm probably going to get out of it too. Um, but in this particular group, uh, there's people that don't think the books of the Gospels, uh, Acts, Revelation, Hebrews, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, John, James, that they pertain to us today. And to me, that's just making the Bible like a bag of trail mix and we only want to believe certain things. And one of the discussions that they've been having lately is that the letters outside of what Paul teaches doesn't show salvations or anything like that. And it, 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 as soon as I had heard that particular, as soon as I read that particular post, I was thinking, well, what about the Ethiopian eunuch? And that's what I want us to talk a little bit about today and um, see what we can gather out of the story. And uh, let's start here at Ethiopia, or the Ethiopian, there we go. Let's start here at Acts chapter 8. We're going to look starting at verse number 27 today. Scripture says, And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch under a eunuch, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasure, and had come to Jerusalem for to worship, was returning and sitting in his chariot, reading Isaiah the prophet, and the spirit saith said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot. I want to stop there for just a second because that's a whole other story that we need to look at here is how how sensitive are we to the Spirit's leading? You know, the Spirit told, told Philip to go up and join himself to that chariot. In other words, go help that man. Are we Are we as quick to respond as Philip is here? Or do we look for a way out? Okay, I'm going to stop there. We'll probably discuss that down the road one day. Pick it up here again in verse number 30. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. And, and the place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before his shearer, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away, and who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom speaketh the prophet, of the prophet this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came to a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? 
and Pharaoh said, If thou be believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he, he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, and Philip and the eunuch. And he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Friends, an awesome story right here, and a story of, of how we can be used of God, but how nobody is outside the saving power of God either. Now, let's look at some things we know about this, this Ethiopian eunuch here. We, knew, we know that he knew about God. Because scripture in verse number 27 tells us that he went to Jerusalem to worship. He may have known about God. He may have understood some things about God. But it's obvious here that he knew nothing about Jesus. And he didn't understand or didn't know about salvation most likely. Uh, but he had went to Jerusalem to be baptized. He was, he was reading from the prophet Isaiah. Now remember back in, in his time... He wouldn't have had a Bible to hold like we did. He was probably holding some large scroll. And and he was reading from the prophet Isaiah chapter 53. And it's verses that talked about Jesus. And he asked Philip a question. He said, hey, is this guy talking about himself in these verses or somebody else? Legitimate question. And then Philip, I love what he does here. Philip started where the man was and then preached Jesus to him. Philip used the verses that the man was reading to tell him about Jesus. That was a starting point to tell him about Jesus. Look at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. So Philip, starting at that scripture, taught him about Jesus. People don't have to be reading a specific book or be, leave, be living in a certain way. We need to start preaching Christ where they are, where they are at the time. We can use their life experiences to preach about Christ. We can use the Bible book they're reading to preach about Christ. You know, there was a video I shared on, on Facebook the other day. It's one that challenges me very much. And I've shared it several times as I come across it. But here's a person that I would assume is an evangelist of some kind. He was preaching in a church. And it was a Pentecostal church most likely. Not that it really matters. But he was talking about needing to get a haircut. And he had been at home at this particular time when he needed a haircut. And he thought, great, he could go and get his haircut at his barber. And he calls up, makes an appointment, and goes and... He gets to the barber shop and the receptionist told him that the barber he had wanted that he made the appointment with had to leave uh, for a family emergency. But there was a, another lady barber that would be able to help him. And he said, sure, I'll, I'll see the lady. And so he goes and, and you know, sits down, gets ready to get his hair cut. And pretty soon this lady walks in and he describes her as as having hair that is spiked and multicolored, having many piercings, hundreds of piercings in her face, having on really bold uh, clown-like makeup, and she wasn't wearing a, a shoes that matched, her socks didn't match, and, you know, it would have been somebody he describes as someone that he surely didn't want to talk to because he figured they'd have nothing in common. But as he's getting his hair cut, Pretty soon the lady had asked him what he did for a living. And he said that he worked for this church right here at the intersection of such and such a road and such and such a road. And, and he said, you're familiar with that? She said, oh, yeah, I'm very familiar with that. She said, I just, I was just at your church uh, yesterday. And he was floored by it. He was dumbfounded by it. He said, you were at the church? And. She said, yeah, you have a bookstore there, don't you? And he said, well, yes, ma'am, we do. And she said that she went in there and, and bought a Bible the other day because uh, someone gave them a, a video, one of those left-behind videos. And she said her mother is a cocaine addict, her her uncle is a cocaine addict, and, and 
you know, if you don't know anything about God, don't know anything about salvation, don't know anything about any Christian stuff. But watching that video, the one thing she knew is that she didn't want to go to hell. The moral of this man's story, and I think one that we all need to look at and one that we all need to apply, is that you and I don't have a right to determine who we're going to share the gospel with. That man as a preacher should have been ready to share the gospel with somebody. I should have been ready to share the gospel with the person. My question is, how many people is put in my life each day that I should be sharing the gospel with? But instead, I'm talking about the football game or about the weather or about what's going on at work. And how many people come into your life that you should be sharing the gospel with? But you talk about an upcoming vacation or what your kids are doing, what their kids are doing. Philip could have just as easily ignored this man driving down the road. But he didn't. The Spirit gave him leading and said, go to that chariot. And Philip went. How many times a day are we getting the call to go and share the gospel with somebody? But we don't do it. We don't hear the call. You know, one thing that's great about modern day technology is that we can be reached, you know, whenever somebody needs to reach us. But even as great as all that technology is, we as humans can mess it up in that we can turn it on silent mode and go all day and not ever realize it's on silent mode. Friends, let me ask you today and let me challenge you today. Are you going to be like Philip and follow the Spirit's call when you're getting told to tell somebody about Jesus? Or are you going to ignore that calling? Put your head in the sand and run the other way. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's Word and allow God's Word to get into you. And then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day real quick, though, as, as we finish up the story. I didn't finish up our story here. As a result of the teaching of Philip, where the man was, verses 36 to 39, we see where the man was baptized. What could be done? How can we change this world? If each of us followed the Spirit's leading in the same way that Philip did. Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's Word and allow God's Word to get into you. Then share that Word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Hello, this is Heaven. May I help you? Uh, yeah, I think I found a flaw in your manual. You mean the Bible? Yes. You know that section that says, So in everything, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you? Matthew chapter 7, verse 12? Sure. Now, when you say everything, does that mean everything? Or are there exceptions? What is it about the word everything that you don't understand, sir? Well, I have this really obnoxious brother-in-law, and I would love to just take some chicken feathers and some hot uh, chocolate sir. syrup and... Sir? Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Surely there's got to be an exception to that rule. Trust me, sir. How about a loophole? There's a very good reason why there's no exception in that section. I don't think whoever wrote that ever met my brother-in-law. Regardless, sir, that section is a part of God's standard for how we are to treat others. We can't apply His standard only when it's convenient. It's easy to think our circumstances are unusual. But are you willing to obey God even when it's tough? Another message from Lifeline Productions, the comic strip of radio at lifelinepro.com. 